So this thing has a brake light. So if I uh, squeeze the brakes, see the brake lights. That's cool. Let me see. Let me turn on the uh, headlight. See that tail light turns on. Yep, the tail light turns on. That's cool. I like that. So nice, nice scooters will have that option. So I'm gonna adjust the brakes here a little bit. I'm gonna take up some slop. I think it's a little bit. Uh, I think it's still sloppy. Um, so now I'm squeezing, and you can actually see the. Uh, I'm not sure you guys can see it. Let's let me line it up centered, and so it's, you guys can have a better look at it. So as I'm squeezing, you see the rotor get pushed in. So that's normal on mechanical disc brakes. Usually the pad on on the inside here stays fixed; it doesn't move. The pad on the outside is the one that moves. So, so it moves in and it, and it squeezes, and it pushes the uh, it pushes against the rotor, but also at the same time it pushes the rotor towards the inside pad, right? So you see that the deflection. So that's that's pretty normal usually. So what I'm gonna do, or what I'm what I'm trying to do, uh, actually let me see if I can lift this up and spin the back wheel real fast and see how. So there's no squeaking, so that means it's not touching, so that's good. It's not touching uh, either side, so that's good. But what I think I'm going to do is... I am going to... Adjust it, so that way, adjust it, loosen these two up, and adjust it outwards a little bit, just a tiny bit. Just enough that... Um, that it, it moves less. So the rotor gets pushed last. All right. So let's do that first before I even adjust the cables. So I just this five. Yep, that's five. I'm gonna get my socket wrench. So so yeah. So this the setup is just like you know it's just like mechanical uh, mechanical disc brakes on a bicycle. So it's no big deal, no uh, nothing special. So I, I'm turning this to the it's slightly, really lightly stops. That's what I want. I don't want it to be sloppy, otherwise it's more to uh, to adjust. So what you do is you uh, what you want to do is you want to squeeze the brakes, and when you do that, it kind of centers itself, right? The brakes kind of center itself. Right, it to brakes onto itself a little bit without without deflecting the rotor. You see that the rotor doesn't doesn't flex at all. So from there, I I look at my relation of my my bolts to my uh, to the caliper uh, mounting spot. So I'm gonna release the brakes a little bit and I push the those brakes inwards a little bit. Just give me that little bit of s s slack so that way it doesn't. Um, it doesn't um, it doesn't rub so that one's good this one needs to move in a little bit oops moving too much Just a little bit like that I notice that I'm I'm tightening this I'm holding it right here. I'm not holding it all the way back here. If you hold it all the way to the back right here, it's too too much leverage, and it's gonna it's gonna um, strip the strip the threads. Okay, I think I'm good there. Let's see. Now you see it pushing the rotor in. That's good. That means that means on the the pad on the inside, it's not touching the rotor. So that's good right there. See, let's lift this up again. Let's see how it feels. Yep, there's nothing touching. I can actually kind of feel the feel the um, I felt the the region the region breaking going on. Or well, maybe not. Because I felt a little bit of resistance right here. It's not it's not free coasting like you would you would normally think free coasting would be. So I think I still have too much space. So 
my rotors start pushing too much, I think. I tighten it with the brakes fully squeezed. What happens is, is that the inside pad is gonna it's gonna rub. Uh, but let me let me try it anyways. All right, I see the pad touching right there. Let's see, let's lift this up. Hear that? It's actually not that bad. It's not that bad. So I have the last lap right now. My brake lever is basically touching the, the grip. So that's too much slop there because I, because I took up slop here. I'm gonna take up slop right here too, where the nut is. Let's take up this right here. See this the lot of space right there? If I turn this nut right here. So this right here, this is where I adjust the, uh, you make this adjustment adjustment when the, uh, the brake pads wear, and you would just uh, take up the slack. Because as it wears, there's more slack. So this thing's, all the slack's already taken up, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it, give it back more slack, and I'm gonna take up the, uh, the wire instead. Okay, that's good there. Turn this thing with your hands. It's kind of tight because the tension of the cable. See now there's all this thread showing, so that's what you want. So now there's even more slop. There's even more slop there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take up slop here, where I'm gonna loosen this 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 end up right here. I'm gonna be mindful of how much space there is between the 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 outside brake pad and and the uh, and the rotor. If I will loosen this up, this up, it's probably it might even give me more. Yep, it did. It gave me even more slop. So I'm not sure if this thing is adjustable. Let me see if this thing, this way is adjustable or not. It's not the right size. Sometimes you could adjust this inwards. From here, adjust the pads inward, and I might do that. Let me see if I can find the right size. So these here are five millimeters. This one here, I think it's four. Yep, it's four millimeter. Let me see if I can actually adjust this again. I'm not sure if it's gonna work or not. Nope. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Feel something. Let's see. It's tightening, but I'm not sure if it's tightening or or it's turning in. No, I think it's just tightening, tightening. Okay. So now I could actually use this to actually torque this. So this how this thing this thing um, pull this way or that way, All right? So let me go something like this, like that. So the right there is touch, touching, give it some slack. Like so, like that.
else. So we could hold this. Each time I I let go of the cable, the cable actually wants to feed back in, so it's it's not a it's not a giving the slack that I want. Let's see if I can hold it with with the cable instead. Much better. It feels pretty firm actually. It feels like maybe too firm. But anyways, I'm gonna test it out and see how it feels. Well, that's how you adjust it. All right, so uh, I just finished adjusting the brakes. It feels good right now. Oh my god! <laughs> People that were talking about this, they were right. So this thing is so much power in dual wheel drive that if you're leaning back and when and you hit the accelerator, the front wheel will spin out. So you have to actually, when you when you when you uh, hit the accelerator, you have to lean forward so the front wheel doesn't spin out. And when you're braking, you have to lean back. If you're leaning forward, you might go over the handlebars. The the regen brake on this comes on so strong that that it actually you know it shifts your weight forward. It's pretty strong even before the mechanical brakes t turn on. So uh, so actually that's kind of the reason why I got this thing because I think uh, they said that you know Hoover one said that that um, in the next. In the next batch, they can adjust the regen brake to make it a little weaker and you know to not not be as strong. I didn't want that. I want I wanted regen brake to be really strong. Uh, so so that's the reason why I I got this one instead of the uh, instead of wait, waiting for the uh, second batch. Uh, other thing I noticed I was looking at on this thing is that I noticed that this deck border here is pretty much solid. I can see I can see if I hit there's a, a in a, a joint right here and right here I think on the bottom as well let me just flip this thing sideways yeah so this the bottom deck is all one, one piece it's all welded one piece I was looking at the back here as well this is all welded as well so so because some scooters you can, you can set the battery out if you take out the back wheel and you slip it out outwards, but this one you can't because it's welded. So all, this, all the bottoms are all welded. I see a screw right here and a screw right here. So that tells me that to, to get to the battery, you have to take off the uh, the, the, the deck tape on the top. Um, you gotta take off this, this deck tape. And somewhere, I think on, somewhere on here, uh, you know, you know where the joints are. Just maybe, maybe there's a little line that goes all the way across from here, where this joint right here to the other side. And same thing with the back. So that's probably where you could, you could, uh, if you take this this off, you could unscrew this and, and get access to the uh, get access to the uh, the uh, the battery. So it's, so it's not a simple thing, you know. Uh, taking this off and cause this thing this thing's screwed on, so. But the reality is, is I think, I think something, especially something like this with a, such a big battery. By the time that you need to replace the battery, most likely the rest of the scooter is just so worn out that it's not worth it. It's better just to get get another scooter, basically. Uh, so one thing that I don't like is they didn't give you a uh, look at the stuff. I was going through the stuff here, but they didn't give you they didn't give you the uh, the little adapter for the pump for the the. Uh, the Schrader valve, right? This is the automotive valve right here. And the thing is, it's so the space in here is so small that you can't get you can't get a pump on you know a regular pump like a bicycle head pump head on here because there's no space. That's that's the problem with all these scooters. That this oops, there's no space here for for like a pump to hit on. And uh, I don't even think I could get my. Um, I don't even think I could get my uh, my chuck, my uh, air compressor chuck on here. Let's see, let's, where's that chuck at? Let me grab the chuck real fast. Yeah, I don't even think I could get this on here. 
Yeah, the... Yeah, it won't even go on. Yeah, it won't even go on. It's just... There's no, there's no, not enough space here. Nope, there's not enough space here. I mean, on, on my other scooters, on my go tracks and everything else, I actually took the wheel apart and actually, uh, I took a deburring tool and deburred this. So basically, a chamfer tool to to open this up so it's bigger, so I could get that get this air check on here. So I'm probably gonna have to do this with this this one too, because uh, you know, there's there's no adapter, and I don't like I don't like that adapter anyways. The adapter doesn't work very well. At least in my opinion, it doesn't work very well. Um, so these are just the, the regular, uh, I think the eight and a half inch diameter, but the actual um, the actual rim width is, uh, or not width, but diameter is 6.1. So it's right here, it says 50 over 75. That's the width. Width uh, and height. And the 6.1 is the size of the uh, the rim, uh, not the outside diameter, but the inside. The, you know, the rim, the rim itself, not the tire. So, anyways, uh, yeah. So I look forward to riding this thing around and and uh, see how it goes.